is about land and occupation. I think it's time to remind the evildoers about God's role in the appropriation of land and other resources. So in Surah 20, verse 6, the Quran says, Lahu mafis samawati wa mafil ard, wa bainahuma tahtasara. To him belongs what is in the heavens and the earth, and what is between them, and what is under the soil. It is he who has made the earth tame. So walk among its slopes and eat of its provisions. Equally important is water. As we read in Al Quran in Surah Baqarah 164, in the water which Allah sent down from the heavens and brought with it life on earth after being dead and gave life to it in every kind of land and animal and in directing the winds and in the clouds that are enslaved between heaven and earth. All these are signs for a people to comprehend. It is clear that no society is injustice free. Man's inhumanity to man has no limits. Every human being experiences injustice, incorrectness and abuse of basic rights one way or the other. It is also true that certain societies, justice and security are the preserve of only a handful of people denied by so many others. Yet how do you measure social justice? How can you evaluate social conditions in a particular group or race? So we will discuss some of the disparities. Top on the list of the recent injustice, injustices is arguably, inarguably, the crisis in Palestine. There's a genocide taking place in real time as the world watches in silence this crime against humanity. I know that many of you are well informed of the terrible atrocities committed in Palestine and now Lebanon, and that you have been inundated with millions of WhatsApp messages and social medias and TikToks and the like. But remember that no meeting no bayan and no lecture anywhere, anytime, without reference to the plight of our beloved brothers and sisters in Palestine is complete. It is the least we can do. So hurt if you must, but remind yourself every day about the terrible pain and suffering that they are enduring. So there's an article by a beautiful article by Roy, but we will leave it to the end, uh, time permitting. As we continue with just some of the remaining hotspots the world is facing, a crisis after another crisis. Somalia, the forgotten people of Africa, seldom featured on the news. The crisis here is monumental to say the least. We know so little because we hear so little. The number of dead and displaced people go into millions. Somalia faces one of the worst droughts in four decades, resulting in a critical food shortage of over four over eight million people. It has decimated livelihoods, especially those in the agricultural sector, Three and a half million livestock have perished, equivalent to one third of the country's total. This has led to devastation of their livelihoods, and with it comes political upheavals, uh, significant displacement, and migration. Of course, the root cause here too is Western interference. Somalia is too big a country and too Muslim. So they split it in two and created destabilization as they did in Asia and the rest of the world. 
We come to Kashmir, locked down in silence and oppressed. Modi can be likened to the Netanyahu, and so Kashmir is his Gaza. It is well known that Modi is an intimate fan of the Zionist state and that no doubt where his sympathies lie. India is no longer a friend of Palestine. When the bombing began, thousands of Modi supporters put up Israeli flags on their DP and social media. They helped spread the vilest disinformation on behalf of the Zionists. And just a lesson from Modi lest he forgets an era of darkness during the British rule. Besides examining the many ways in which the colonizers exploited India, ranging from the drain of national resources uh, to Britain, the destruction of the Indian textile industry, the steel industry, the shipping industry, and all the negative transformation of agriculture. In 1930, an American historian and philosopher wrote that Britain's conscience and deliberate bleeding of India was the greatest crime in all history. He was not the only one to deny the cruelty of the British rule, and his assessment was not exaggerated. In the year 200 years of rule, almost 35 million Indians have died through commission or omission, and the largest of the casualties being during the, during the, the Bengal uh, famine. And of course, the war in 1857, and the most recent was, was in Amritsar, Jallianwala Bagh, as people all remember. So besides the death of the Indians, British rule impoverished India in a manner that beggars belief. India's share of the gross domestic product was 23% when, uh, when the British entered. When they left 200 years later, it was down to 3%. The Dutch East India Company, backed by the British government, extended its control and was the sole ruler. And they ruled by extortion and double dealing. We talk of Yemen. Yemen remains one of the largest humanitarian crises in the world, with around 9.8 million children in need, and one of the former, and one of the more forms of humanitarian assistance. After many years of conflict, the national socio-economic systems in Yemen remain on the edge, in total collapse, while the conflict at large. Displacement, recurring climate uh, shocks that have left families vulnerable to disease. Millions of children left, lack access to food and water, sanitation and hygiene services. And the list goes on. Other factors that exacerbate uh, the crisis that we're facing are economic inequalities. 1% of the world population controls 40% of its resources. Climate change and pollution, deforestation, water scarcity, with 2 billion people having no access to water or running water. And then ideologies like xenophobia and nationalism. So what is evidently clear in each of the above crisis is it that they are man-made and they are driven by greed and avarice and they are rooted in self-interest and evil. It is firmly entrenched in the great divide between the rich, industrialized north and the poor, debilitating south. So these self-appointed patriarchs we're talking about the Zionists and their Western allies, claim sole responsibility for the new world order. With their might and wealth, they enforce their own brand of democracy, justice, and rule of law. By creating this great 
global north and south divide, they continue to perpetuate the legacies of colonialism, which is very much alive and well. The huge disparities between the rich industrialized north and the poor underdogs down south is evident in every facet of their livelihood. Under centuries of imperialism, inequalities, and apartheid, this situation is stuck. Historical ex exploitation and oppression has robbed them of economic upliftment, healthcare, and education. To maintain their global hegemony, the United States and its allies have been at war or conflict situations in no less than 135 countries as self-appointed guardians to save the world. And in the process, they have looted and plundered the resources of the poor nations, exploiting everything and leaving them in perpetual debt. Those who refuse to submit to their will, they will hit back with an orgy of slaughter and ruthless vengeance, dropping all pretenses of their so-called civilized mission. They kill and murder with reckless ferocity and become the real beast they accuse the oppressors of being. They expose the lies of their moral superiority and fundamental truth of Western civilization, which they so proudly speak of. So between 1880 and 1920, these European powers divided the entire African continent, like you cut a piece of cake, you know, across tribal boundaries with absolute disdain. They enslaved the population, expropriated the natural resources, foreign interventions and military coups, support for authoritarian regimes was the order of the day. Consumed by greed and avarice, they remain blinded by the qualities of compassion, blind, uh, kindness and social justice. These days the term social justice is regarded loosely as if it was a mere concept that cannot be achieved, a utopian concept. Therefore, one cannot fully say that a society is truly free until it is better understood, the concept of social justice. So let's see what the Quran says about justice. In uh, Surah Nisa 135, Allah says, Oh, you will believe, be upholders of justice, witness to Allah, even if we be against yourself or your parents. And in Maeda 48, Allah says, And we have sent down to you the book with truth, confirming the scriptures that came before it, and a witness over it. So judge them by what Allah has revealed. On equality, in Surah al hujurat verse 13, all humans are created equal before Allah. And there are so many that I can quote from. Social justice is to protect the rights of the poor, the orphans, and the vulnerable. That is Surah Ma'un, which we read in our daily prayers. There are too many forms of injustices today. But the root cause is the Western style of democracy and capitalism that is imposed on all humanity. Materialism and worldly pleasures. We have all succumbed to it sometime or the other. So there's an important point about popular culture. American corporations and popular culture affect the lives and infect the indigenous cultures of millions of people around the world. The foreign policy of the US government, backed by its military strength and unprecedented global influence, is at the heart of this uh, 
हाइपर पावर एक्ट अमेरिका एक्सपोर्ट इज वैल्यू सिस्टम डिफाइनिंग वट इट मीन्स टू बी सिविलाइज टू बी रैशनल टू बी डेवलप डेमोक्रेटिक इन डीड वट इज टू बी ह्यूमन मीन वेल द यू एस इट सेल्फ इज इम्पर्वियस टू आउटसाइड इंफ्लुएंसेज एंड इफ मोस्ट अमेरिकन थिंक ऑफ द रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एट ऑल इट इज इन टर्म्स ऑफ अ डीपली इनग्रेन्ड कल्चरल स्टेरियोटाइप्स सो वी हैव सेवरल डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज ऑफ of of illiter of slavery slavery of illiteracy which is denied to most people organizational and institutional injustice and the world is going through this huge corruption and evil there is virtually no major national or international contract that goes on without corruption so we all know that injustice breeds hatred and hatred breeds discrimination discrimination breeds exclusivity and that breeds violence and the cycle goes on typically the case in palestine where the world is watching in horror in real time on of the greatest crimes against humanity so although this carnage is going on for 70 odd years the last 12 months have been the most devastating it's open season for the military establishment as they reap billions for the arms industry and at the same time testing their lethal arsenal of weapons against a helpless a starving and a dying nation what a shame what a travesty and these settlers these rogues want us to condemn october the 7th for the record i personally do not condemn it in fact i endorse it it is a just act against oppression against imprisonment against genocide the united nations the icc the icj they all agree that the zionists are guilty of genocide and so do the teeming millions of self respecting people around the world just for the record there are some documented events that predate october the 7th so it was nothing less than a lame excuse to what they were referred to as finish the job the seeds of gaza's famine and destruction was so long before october the 7th so do not buy into this but there is a enormous amount of statistics that have gone into this uh, so i will not uh, 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 go into it but sum up quickly in the next two minutes uh, briefly as we read the plan to annihilate gaza was long uh, long before october the 7th the genocide ethnic cleansing and displacing of, of over seven decades but it was intensified 20 years ago with unparalleled cruelty and bombing of women and children and aid workers before october the 7th they had deliberate water water shortages that created diseases they even imprisoned people by their thousands they allowed a minimum amount of food to enter gaza they killed 2000 cattle and destroyed harvests of 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 of, of uh, olives they cut their fishing rights they refused access to medicine water and electricity so is no uh, 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 everybody knows that it's one of the biggest open air prisons 
And you cannot compare the two as a, as a superpower versus a, a nation that is basically living on grass. What a travesty, what a shame. This article was 12 years old. The Israeli military made a precise calculation, and you're not going to believe this, they, they actually allowed a certain level of of calories that a human being can consume in order just to survive. So there's a, there's a, there's a huge uh, survey done on this. And this was all in preparation for the ultimate demise of Gaza. And now having heard this, who in his right mind can condemn the events leading to October the 7th. You tell me. The root cause of this genocide is not about race or religion. It's about greed and power. So you will not be surprised to see the Zionists rubbing shoulders with, uh, with Muslim leaders, especially the neighboring Arabs. They are very much complicit in this genocide. Either they are captured or they are doing it under duress. Nevertheless, they will be answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't think I have enough time to finish here, but I have some. Just one point I'd like to make. The United States have entered the world stage in the UN, and they took control of the key permanent institutions within the UN, the World Bank and the IMF, with total control of these two vital UN agencies. They have now easy access to manipulate capital, to set interest rates, to control the means of production, tariff, and energy allocations all in favor of the global south, north. As a result, the poor south remains in perpetual debt, barely paying off the huge interest forced onto them. There is no way out of this usurious economy. The USA and its cohorts even established themselves the Special Security Council where they have veto rights and they can overrule any resolution that they like. Usually breeds inequality and deprivation which leads to subservience. It's a pernicious system that robs the poor and enriches the privileged who own 80% of the resources in any case. Just a verse on prohibition and riba in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 275. Those who consume interest cannot stand on the Day of Judgment except one who stands, who is being beaten by Shaitan. And uh, in 278, it was, O you who believe, fear Allah and give up what remains due to you of interest. If you should be believers, and if you do not, then be informed of a war against you from Allah and His Messenger. Sadaqallah wal aliyul azim. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar 
اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حيا رسول الله حيا رسول حيار الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا الحمد لله الحمد لله الأكرم الذي خلق الإنسان وكرمه وعلمه من البيان ما لم يعلم فسبحان الذي لا يحصى امتنانه باللسان ولا بالقلم ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله الذي أوتي جوامع الكلم وكرائم الحكم ومكارم الشيم صلى الله عليه وسلم سلم وعلى آله وأصحابه نجوم الطريق الأمم أما بعد فإن علم الشراع والأحكام هو أعظم فرائد الإسلام ومن ثم أمير به وحض عليه تعليما وتعلما فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغ عني ولو آية وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام من سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام من يرد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام إن العلماء ورثه الأنبياء وإن الأنبياء لم يورثوا دينارا ولا درهما وإنما ورثوا العلم فمن أخذه أخذ بحظ وافر وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام من سئل عن علم علمه ثم كتمه أحجم يوم القيامة بلجام من نار وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام من تعلم علما مما يبدغ به وجه الله لا يتعلمه إلا ليصيب به عرضا من الدنيا لم يجد عرف الجنة يوم القيامة يعني ريحها وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام تعلم الفرائد والقرآن وعلم الناس فإني مقبوض أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أمن هو قالد آناء الليل ساجدا وقائما يحذر الآخرة ويرجو رحمة ربه قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون إنما يتذكر أولو الألباب
الحمد لله الحمد لله يستعينه واستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمد عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فانه لا يضر الا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وازواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ارحم امتي ب أمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأستقم حيان عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد رسوله اللهم اغفر للعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير أمتي قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغ يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم من كنتم تعلمون فإذا قضيت الصلاة فانتشروا في الأرض وابتغوا من فضل الله واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون وإذا رأوا تجارة أو لهوا فضوا إليها وتركوك قائما قل ما عند الله خير من اللهو ومن التجارة والله خير الرازقين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر 
Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'bud Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdin As-Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhin An-Namta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد سمعنا وطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير بفضل سبحان ربك رب العز عما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين